Lesson five is on the law of signs, otherwise known as the sign law, which um, is going to be review because you did learn the sign law uh, in grade 10 academic math. So in the last few lessons, we've dealt exclusively with right angle triangles, but what if the triangle is not a right angle triangle? So the sign law was developed um, for oblique triangles. So oblique triangles, those are acute or obtuse triangles. The reason that the sign law was developed is because when I have this triangle ABC, I don't have a, a hypotenuse, so we're not able to use the regular trigonometric ratios. Uh, the sign law was developed from the ratios though, uh, by just extending A to D and making AD perpendicular to BC. There's some sine ratios here that we could use from angle B and angle C. And this isn't super important for us, but um, this is the way that they developed the sine law. So the sine law, what you're going to see, uh, usually it's written like this. And uh, sine A over A, sine B over B, capital letters, remember, are the angles. The lowercase letters are always the sides. And what we're looking at here in this acute triangle, this oblique triangle, um, we would get only two ratios and use those and one of these values can be unknown. So you're going to have to know three values out of four because then we just cross multiply and find the unknown value. So hopefully that's familiar. Um, so we can use the sine law to find the lengths of sides and the measures of angles when we're given the following. Here's the key thing. You need an angle and an opposite side. You need an angle and a, its corresponding side. Sometimes when I teach this, I just say you need a partner. You need an angle and the side across from it. That's one key thing that you need. Then as long as you have one other side or one other angle, you'll be able to um, find the unknown side or angle. So example one, when we look at this, we already have two angles. So these are angles are already set. So we know 32 and 122. This is asking you to solve the triangle. Again, there's no right angle though. So you don't really say, well, what is my hypotenuse? This is not the hypotenuse, this side from A to B, um, because 122 is not a 90 degree angle. So this, now we have this um, obtuse triangle. So what I notice when I look at this triangle is that I do have this partner. So that is an angle and a corresponding side, and this would be side C. And then what I can do, I have this angle here at A, and I could find this side at A that's across from it. So remember, if this is side B down here, this is, sorry, that's angle B, this is side B, angle C. So the angle and the side are the same letter. Sides are lowercase letters. Angles are uppercase letters. And they're always across from each other in the triangle. So what we would do is use the sine law. The reason I'm using C is because I know the angle and the corresponding side. So that's a really good partner. And then I know the angle A so I could find side A. So the only thing that is going to be unknown is side A. So what we need to do here, I'm going to leave it up to you for as much as you want your calculator to do, that is fine. So what I see here, I'm going to cross multiply sine of 122 with A. And then I'm going to cross multiply sine of 32 with 22.3. Some of you might be good enough with your calculator to just know sine 32 times 22.3 equals and then divided by sine 122, because I'm going to have to divide by sine 122 in order to isolate the A. So sine, if you want to write it out, sine 122A is when I go the one direction, and when I go in the other direction and I multiply, I get 11.8172. And then I would want to divide both sides by whatever the sine of 122 is. So A, when I take 11.8172 and I divide it by whatever sine 122 is, I get 13.9 centimeters. So we know side A is 13.9 centimeters. Um, something else we could find, if we know two angles, it'd be really easy to find angle B. So angle B is going to be 
180, because you know they all add up to 180, minus 32 minus 122. Um, so angle B is not bad, that's 26 degrees. So the only thing now we're missing is side B. So side B, I could use a sine law again, but I, I think I might use um, the 122 again, because I know that that's correct. 122 over 22 decimal three equals the sine of, now I'm going to use the 26 over B. Again, in order to find B, I'm going to cross multiply this way and this way. And since sine 122 is with the B and multiplied with the B, I would multiply sine 26 times 22.3 and then divide by sine 122. So I really don't mind if you just type all this in at once and just get the answer. Sine 26 times 22.3 is 9 decimal 7757. And then I'd have to divide both sides by sine 122. So B is 11.5 centimeters. What I think is really important for these questions, this is really what's expected, is that you would have a therefore statement and at least show the measurements of all the three things that you found. So we found uh, one angle and two sides. Example two is a little bit different. So we're gonna just check a few things here about the angles. This time we're only given one angle and an opposite side. I think because we have side C over here that a good angle to find first would be angle C. So we're going to do sine of C over 15 decimal one equals, now I have this partner here, sine of 105 over 20 decimal three. So when I cross multiply sine C times 20 decimal three, that's just 20 decimal three sine C I can't really do anything with that except just put those two uh, values together. I can cross multiply this way, sine 105 times 15 decimal one is 14 decimal 5855. I can divide both sides by 20 decimal three. Some students get stuck here. I have sine C equals, and I can divide those numbers. I get zero decimal 7185. To find angle C, I'm going to have to do the inverse sine of 0 0.7185. And that's, remember, I'm pushing second function or shift on my calculator. Anytime you're looking for an angle, you're going to have to push second function or shift on your calculator. So we were looking for an angle right off the bat. We needed to know this angle here. So eventually when you're looking for an angle, you're going to have to do second function or shift and then angle C we're able to find is 46 degrees. So we know that angle C is 46. What is um, different about this grade 11 unit on trigonometry is that we wanna check if angle C could be anything other than 46. So what we learned in our last lesson, if we took 180 minus our first angle that we have, we would get a second angle. So, or angle C2, our second angle maybe, second possibility would be 180 minus 46. So we've got to check this. 180 minus 46 is 134. Uh, 134, that's just gonna be too big though, because if this one's already 105, and then we have one that is 134, that adds up to 239 degrees instead of 180, just those two angles. So we have to know uh, that that would be too big. So, but angle C2 can't be 134. So we know for sure that this angle here must be 46. Angle C has to just be 46. So then if angle C is 46, uh, angle B is going to be 180 minus 105 minus 46. So we can find angle B for sure in this case would be 29. 
And then the only thing that we don't know, this is 29, what are we still missing? So we still don't have side B. So we can do sine of 29 over B, sine of 105. We could do the sine law again to find side B. And again, we cross multiply. So sine of 105B, sine of 29 times 20 decimal three is nine decimal eight, four, one, six. Divide both sides by sine 105. And for B, we get 10 decimal two centimeters. And so we need our therefore statement. We, we've shown that C has to be 46. B is 29. And side B is 10 decimal 2. Last example, example 3, solve the following triangle. So again, this looks similar at first. It looks like we're going to end up finding an angle first. I have a partner here, sine of 30 over 11. And it looks like I'm going to be able to find angle M first because I have side M, which is 20. And I get 0 decimal 9091. But again, the angle is missing. So I'm looking for an angle. I'm going to have to push shift or second function on my calculator. And I get that angle M is 65. So if angle M is 65 degrees, we just want to check again. Is there another possible angle? So or let's just check here. Angle M could equal, so angle M2, second possibility, it could equal whatever 180 minus 65 is. So we might have a second possibility, and so 115 degrees. This time, if M was 115 and K was 30, that would still be okay. Uh, we would still be able to solve for angle L. So in this case, um, we might have two possibilities here for angle M. So what we need to do now is we're going to actually have to figure out the rest of the values of the triangle using either 65 for angle M or 115. So case one, angle M is 65. Then angle L, which is the one that we still don't know, we have 180 minus 65 minus 30, the one that was given from the beginning. So we could find angle L to be 85 degrees. Case two, what if angle M was 115? then angle L is going to be 180 minus 115 minus the 30 that we were given. And so angle L might be 35 degrees. So we have two possible values for angle L. What we can do now, if we know what angle L is and we know angle M, there's only one more side we need. So we still need to find side L. So this year in math, because there are two possible answers for angle M, we're going to actually have to find two possible answers for side L. So when I cross multiply this way, I'm getting a different value for this uh, possibility than when I cross multiply over here. I'm going to have to divide both sides by sine 30. So I get two different answers for side L, but they're both reasonable. Mm. So finishing off a question like this, I would need two therefore statements. Um, angle M might have been 65, L was 85, and side L 21.9, or angle M is 115, angle L was 35 and side L is 12.6 meters.